Φύσινα σκελούκα. Φύσιο φύσινα σκελούκα. Ζάμπο Αλή Σαμπαρί. Whistling thorn because with the wind it really whistled. Now you see the black thing is called a gal. It's the reaction that the tree has on a bite of a wasp. The wasp put an egg there. The plant reacts, the egg hatches, the wasp is born and she bore a, a hole and she goes out. All this is happening to defend the plant. Why? Normally, a plant that has thorns, like this one, doesn't need to poison its leaves to defend itself. Other trees that do not have thorns, they put a tannin, a substance that is not liked by the browser, like the giraffe, and so that's how they defend themselves. But because these are thorns, it should be enough. In reality, the giraffe is able to come with a very long tongue, getting all the leaves out. So the plant has created this incredible symbiotic relation with a wasp, which is the intermediate animal, because the final animal are ants. Every gull is used for a different purpose by the ants. They hatch their eggs. The plant produces a fungus on which the ants feed. Now, think I am a giraffe. I come here and I start biting the plant. Look at what happened. Look at the bot part of the end. Can you see that it's moving up yeah. and down? They are spreading formic acid. So you can feel it, yeah? You can... So it's not the bite of the ant that bothers the giraffe. It's the formic acid in her mouth. So she gives a couple of bites and she needs to move to another tree. So this tree, simply by having a wasp coming, creating the gall, and creating a perfect environment for the ants, is able to not get destroyed by predators. We have now reached base camp in the Tula forest, right? Yes. And uh, we found um, Matasha. Ma Matasha, which uh, had the uh, water. <laughs> amazing. Yes. <laughs> It is amazing and uh, we are now going to enter this fantastic forest that we came to see here and uh, Luca will give all of you the, uh, the uh, story of the forest while I take care of this uh, fly. Natasha, <laughs> <laughs> before uh, I, I think it is very important, maybe Luca, you can, uh, before we go into the forest, why, why are the big holes in the earth? For them For is a decoration. decoration. Very Thank nice. You Thank you, Natasha. We are in a cloud forest. The cloud forest is fed by the condensation of the clouds more than the rainfall. And look at how interesting are these fig trees. You can see one here on the left, fully grown. And behind us, you can see one that is strangling a hosting tree. The actual main trunk of the tree is up there on the fork. And it's very interesting how everything starts. A bird or the wind will take the seed. The seed will get into a fork. It will sprout, and then the aerial roots will come out mm -hmm. and slowly, slowly embrace the Austin tree. The Austin tree eventually will die. Now, a lot of these branches have so much moss on them. It's uh, because of that? this uh, condensation. 
And it's actually a symbiotic an relationship. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's an yes, it's a Norwegian animal. No, it's very, yeah, very rare. Making noise. And it comes with a huge ship. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you'd end up here. <laughs> Uh, the moth is actually a symbiotic relation because they uh, help uh, keeping the moisture mm -hmm. and that moisture that condenses on the moth will actually go down into the roots. Mm -hmm. Without a place where they can condense, and there will be less water. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Okay. It's a water catchment. That's yeah. what it is. So interesting. Um, we left the car at about 5,000 feet, 1,500 meters. We are now at about 6,000, uh, which is 1,800 meters. Look at something very interesting here. This root has been cut here and here. The reason to cut the root is to collect water. There is no water available here. The Maasai come up and spend time up here grazing for their cows because it's very green grazing. They need water. They chop the root of this fig tree. And immediately, a white substance, transparent and tasteless, come out. And it's water. Hmm. And that's what you're seeing. So that is... So they're just stopping for a drink. Yeah. Yeah. Should we try? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the bottle. <laughs> Normally we should, uh, on a perfect morning, it's now noon, uh, we could see a beautiful shot of Kilimanjaro right, right, there. right there, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere over there. No, no, uh, you can Jamie, see the if you, there are the foothills. You can see yeah. the foothills, huh? Yeah. You see it there. Maybe you can yeah. even see it with the camera. If you go, let's say, on that bush, the bush you have in the front, to the right, on the top of the branches of the bush, that's the foothills of Kilimanjaro, up through the clouds. I'm actually going to point it for you. <laughs> <laughs> every age set, every 10 years, you move ahead of your age set because you become a warrior, you become an oh, elder warrior, oh, yeah. you become a junior elder. Every age set has one chief. So yeah, four chiefs of the government and six chiefs of the Maasai, representing a different age. I see. Then I have a committee that has been elected to represent the people, 25 people. These 25 have normally five who represent them. So I need to speak with those five, I need to check with the elders and with the chief that is fine, and I need to check it with the government chief. That's how important. <laughs> book in South Africa, Jumping High, mm -hmm. is a message to the predator saying, you see I can run, I'm in good shape, don't hunt me, it's not worth it, I will run. Out, run. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Great day, great hike. It's so beautiful up there in the hills and going through the different forests was extra special. And uh, all the wildlife we saw, uh, not like you see it on a game drive maybe where it's right up next to you. We didn't really want that today, did we? <laughs> <laughs> but we saw, what did we see? We saw baboons. Hartebeest, and... baboons, mm -hmm. mountain redbug. We saw a giraffe. Mm -hmm. We saw the bush pig, which is a kind of yeah. warthog. We the saw warthogs, Thompson gazelle, right. yeah. we saw impala, we saw warthogs. Yeah, yeah. It, was it was great. Fun. Yeah. We saw lion dung. We didn't see we the lion. We did see it, <laughs> fortunately. But that was great to, to get out and do it on foot. Uh, that was just a wonderful climb. And that view from on top of the mountain, looking into the other plains, was just spectacular. It is breathtaking. Yeah. And now we just had a wonderful lunch. Thank you. Uh, back here. Uh, Thanks to your lovely wife. And, I uh, cooked it. What do you mean? You did. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're fast. So uh, now we're gonna, just going to wrap things up, and then we're going to you know, catch a plane and uh, go on to Amboseli. Yes, you like it. Mm -hmm. Right to the foothills of Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. Anything uh, you could uh, tell me about the Maasai people and the culture and how they live? And It's so difficult to relate to such a different culture. They are totally not westernized. And Captain Dagestan was asking me, you know, what is the process of the decision making? And for any European or Western, it's a very difficult process because it's never ending. Mm -hmm. And you need to cope with that. Mm -hmm. And at the end, what is democracy? Is it really democracy taking a decision that is taken by the majority? Not really if the minority is unhappy about it. Mm -hmm. So we are used to that concept and everything goes well until the minority is very unhappy. In these times, we have seen that minorities in the Western world may become quite unhappy mm -hmm. by the decision of their leaders. In Maasai land, that, that doesn't happen because you will have several meetings in which you discuss the same issue and you need to have the community to agree to something. So it took about six months just to decide to build this. Mm -hmm. This was their land, there were no roads. It, it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. So they are... A, different culture. I wouldn't define them complicated mm -hmm. or difficult. They are what they are. Yeah. And you have to learn to, to think like they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Direct questions, very impolite. There is a way of addressing things. Mm -hmm. You have to do it slowly, slowly. But in their culture, I think there is a lot of balance. Mm -hmm. Everything is very in harmony. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Maybe parents will decide about wedding and say to their boy, you are going to marry this girl and they have to pay a dairy for the bride. Mm -hmm. But I come from Italy. Until 30 years ago, there was no divorce in Italy. And I'm not defending the institution of divorce. I think it's very sad that you mm -hmm. divorce, but I think it's even sadder if something is not working and mm -hmm. you are forced to remain unhappy for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. In the Maasai culture, Basically, if two people are unhappy, they will go in front of the elders and they will explain their difficulties. They will say why they are unhappy and the elders will advise them. If you think about it, it's like going to see a counselor. It's, yeah. it's very interesting. And if they are unable to fix it and any of the one is found to be wrong, it will be warned. And if it doesn't work, the marriage will be break. Mm -hmm. I think that is yeah. quite a... An yeah. evolving way of thinking, if you think mm -hmm. that it's 2,000 years old. Now, in a divorce, would the man still have to support the family? No. The girl will go back to her parents. Mm -hmm. 
uh, she will have to give back the dairy pay. The, the, oh, really? Yeah. Huh. So yeah. the cows will be given back to the man, and you restart over. Yeah. No hard feelings. Mm -hmm. Children will stay with the mother mm -hmm. normally. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Well, I love your place here and the view out to the plains and the Kilimanjaro, which is clouded up, but uh, it's just spectac spectacular. Uh, I could uh, sit here and relax for Please weeks. Please do. For do weeks you, on you end. Do you need to go back? I do, unfortunately, <laughs> but I could sure use a few days here. That would be great. Well, we'll take a few more shots, and then I know we have to get on to the airport. Yes. Uh, but, Luca, I think uh, again, thank you uh, for being a great lecturer. Thank you. It has been a pleasure it. to be with you. It has been a pleasure to be on board. And um, I look forward to have you back. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to be back. I look forward to that time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.